Hello everyone, I just wanted to make this really quick video on how I set up my code formatting for Ruby on Rails in Visual Studio Code. Um, it's really just one quick command that you run and three extensions, I think, and one setting for one of the extensions. But it basically gives you these nice icons for your files, um, some code formatting when you save. So whenever you save a file, it'll automatically format the file for you and some syntax highlighting for Ruby on Rails. Uh, for the code formatting, I think, you need to have the RuboCop gem installed. And I did that uh, globally. So for that, the command is rvm at global do gem install RuboCop. And that is R-U-B-O-C-O-P and then end. And when you run that command, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff appear. It's just installing the dependencies. And once that's done, you can come over to your extensions, which the hotkey is control shift and X. And if you search up here, you'll get a whole bunch of extension selections or options to choose from, I guess. Uh, and the ones you want, if you ignore these React ones that I have, are this Ruby on Rails one. So if I search Ruby on Rails, it should be option number three. And if you click on it, it can, you'll see like install locally, I think. And this will give you your uh, code snippets. So if you type stuff, you'll get auto completion. So if I come up to, I don't know, like my post.rb and I say I want a before action, you can see here that it's uh, doing some code suggestion and I can just click that and boom, it's done. So that's nice. That also works in your DB folder, I think. So if I come down to my DB and like for this add username, or not the username, let's come into the create comments. So let's say I want to add like a um, another references. So you can do t.ref and if you hit enter, it'll automatically do some auto completion for you and you can just select uh, or change the options that you need or get rid of whatever you don't. So that's also really nice. I'm going to close this without saving because I don't want these changes saved. Um, the other one is, if I come back, uh, this VS Code Ruby, which is syntax highlighting. So you just, again, install locally. And these are going to prompt you to restart, but don't do that yet because you also want to do this VS Code icons, which is the thing that changes the file icons. And if you watch the, um, the GIF right here, you can see how it sort of updates all of these files and they all have these cool new pictures for them. Once that's done, instead of clicking restart, just like hard close Visual Studio Code and then either run code dot or come over and open it again, however you choose. And once that's done, you should see the icons update and uh, everything else should be running. The only thing you really need to do at this point um, is if we come to like the show page and let's say you want to use Emmet, which for those of you that don't know, like um, lets you quickly create divs and stuff. So let's say I want to create a div with an ID of code. If I type hash code, and this is what you use in JavaScript to like find the, the div by the ID or in like your CSS, if you're trying to reference a div, this is the symbol for it. If it's a class, you do period, but they both work. Uh, if you type this and hit tab, oops, hit tab, uh, it'll automatically create the div for you, which is just a great way to get around. Uh, the only thing is tab isn't enabled by default, although Emmet does ship with Visual Studio Code. I think it's Emmet 2 that comes with it. Uh, the quick way to do this is if you come up to File and then Preferences and Settings, and you just search for Emmet, uh, that's E-M-M-E-T. And then if you scroll down through here, you should see Trigger Expansion on Tab. Uh, I checked that, and that's really all you have to do. And that's basically it for this video. It's a short one, but uh, I made that community post asking if anyone wanted to see this and there seemed to be some interest so I just thought I'd cover it real quick because it's you know it takes a little bit the first time but once you do it a couple times or I guess even just once it's fairly fast and it just helps to know what you're doing so yeah that's going to do it for me uh, if this helped you at all then you know like the video if this didn't help you then dislike it because we don't want to subject other people to that uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in part three of the blog tutorial video goodbye